Hello everyone and welcome to this year's Chainmare Bingo Predictions Game 2019. Last year I made 24 predictions and then laid them all out on a bingo board in the hopes of scoring a line as the year progressed and my outlandish predictions came true. I tried not to play it too safe but alas my go big or go home attitude left me without a bingo to speak of. This year however we're giving the format a competitive twist and turning it into Chainmare Bingo Versus. This time four of us are going head to head with our bingo predictions. Now you may think, well that'll be easy to win, you just make lots of easy predictions like Mercedes will score at least one point, or Verstappen's radio messages will need to be bleeped out, and you'll have a bingo before the first round. But here's where the twist comes in. We'll each have a 4x4 bingo board with spaces for 16 predictions, and we'll each make 16 predictions. But all of our predictions, all 64 of them, will be thrown into a hat, shuffled, and then doled out at random to each of our bingo boards, so we'll each be left with a mixture of each other's predictions. This makes pitching your predictions a fine art. You could throw in a really risky one, like Haas will win the championship, but the risk is you'll get given that one for your own bingo board. Or you could go really obvious, like Hamilton will call any given audience his best fans, but you risk one of your competitors being given such an easy win. Now I've advised everyone to try and think of a mix of predictions floating between the simple and the outlandish, so hopefully we get a nice mix of boards. I'm going to play you the prediction straw as we all react live to the predictions being pulled out of a hat. Well, not a real hat, I made a little program in Excel. None of us have seen each other's predictions at the point of this recording, including me. And I'm recording this pre-video message ahead of time, so I have no idea what to expect as I speak to you now. It could get very interesting. Let's watch. Uh, hello everyone, and thank you for joining me and for the draw of all your predictions into your bingo boards. Um, I've pre-recorded an intro video to this live recording to explain to everyone who's going to watch this um, what's about to happen, but just to confirm, no one has seen each other's predictions yet, so it's all a big surprise. Yep. Um, yeah, I can confirm. Okay. I mean, I, I did trade a can of rich energy for John T's, but okay. we can pretend. Okay. This lies. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to introduce you guys, for people who don't know who you are. Uh, we've got Sean from the F1 Word. And also from the FE word now. Hi, Sean. Oh, yes. Separate channels. I'm just that exciting. Hello. How are we all? Um, we've also got John T from John T's Corner, but also um, resident opinion haver on the F1 word. Yes. Hello. Um, I can call Sean a turncoat for going to Formula E. Oh, well, you're in a slightly Formula E heavy chat now because we've also got Hazel, uh, motorsport journalist in Formula E and Formula One and quite a few other things really yeah i get everywhere you can't stop me it's like mold great that really sells yourself <laughs> it does it does champagne is a mold okay so um i'm going to move on to the finger quotes live draw and we're all going to find out who ends up with the most uh, achievable bingo board and hopefully at some point in the year what you're uh, trying to achieve is to be the first person to get a bingo that's um a line through your board horizontally vertically or through either diagonal but we'll probably all fail at that and just go for who has the most squares ticked off at the end and just to for the audience at home who are watching this the people watching this have a uh, a few seconds visual delay so they'll be listening to my description of what we're seeing on the screen and there's also some color coding so i'm in yellow sean's in a sort of rusty red john t's in blue and hazel's in green so you can all see uh, where all the predictions coming from. So let's find out if this silly thing that I made in Excel works. Are you ready? Extremely. Yes. Okay, right. I can't wait to see what ludicrous things you've made. Okay, I'm clicking the button. And I'm pulling the name out of the hat, which you'll see is a hat in a second. Okay, I well... I really hope someone else is first. <laughs> okay, well, the first prediction's for me and by me. So that makes it quite simple. Uh, in which I predicted that new pit stop procedure rules will be announced at some point in the year. Um, for safety reasons, the way pit stops could be conducted in future will be changed, uh, be it limited mechanics, a minimum pit stop time or something else. That's what I'm guessing. And I get to give that to myself, which I'm a bit worried about, actually. <laughs> so that goes on my board. This next one's for Sean. Right. Okay. <laughs> Uh, and this is from John T. Oh, he's called his <laughs> prediction Bottas fights boss, in which he predicts Bottas refuses team orders in at least one race. Oh, good one. Yeah. I like that. I think that's quite doable. 
That's very restrained for John T, to be fair. I'm a bit, are you all right, mate? That's only one. And they're actually not too bad, to be fair, but some are a little bit out there. All right, John T, your first prediction comes from Hazel. Oh, no. In, in which he's predicted, Honda bring the party. After some patchy years, Honda finally find a party mode. So Hazel, oh, that's quite doable as well. So mm. you're predicting that, that Honda managed to get a quite respectable power level going. Um, yes, so yeah, I, I, I think Honda might. They, they might not, but they might. No, I'm happy with that. Yeah, there you go, John T. I definitely approached this in a things I thought could happen, but to varying degrees of how much I believe they would happen. Uh, and Hazel, your first prediction will come from, from yourself. Um, Excellent. Hazel's predicted uh, Mercedes power units develop a smoking habit. They'll go fast, but they also go on fire. That's a bold one. Well, they do have a history of this when they've been pushed to the real limits. So you're guessing uh, competition will start really testing the reliability of Mercedes? Uh, potentially. Um, yeah, I, I've got a few other like technical predictions that, that kind of tie into this. But yes, I, I think um, to make the gain to Ferrari... Um, you might find. I'm really sorry. There for, for some reason, like people screaming in my street. I can hear a little bit of screaming, but I was just thinking it might be in response to these predictions that are coming out. <laughs> They're just very excited to be outside a house where this is happening. I remember East London. All right, I'm going to pull out my next, my second prediction, which comes from me again. Oh, this is going to get. <laughs> Uh, so I'm predicting if that you get all your own things. This is definitely a fix. That would be really funny, wouldn't it? I um, say so I've predicted the team budget cap will be passed finally um, in some form or another. I think the teams are going to agree to pass some kind of budget cap to be implemented in a vague future year, which I think is quite achievable. Mm. But, yeah, but my bingo board is looking very yellow at the moment. Need some blue. OK, well, Sean first. And Sean's got. Another... Sean's going to get all mine. <laughs> Sean's got Hazel's third prediction. Ooh. She predicts a sponsor will be investigated for fraud. Oh, I wonder which one that could be. <laughs> uh... I, I did actually list two. Be it eye time or the antlers guy, someone's going down. <laughs> well, I think that could be. There's also well. a lot of cryptocurrencies entering, and cryptocurrencies are much more likely to be investigated for fraud. Yeah, I think. Yeah, in the wider world, I think this could be the year that cryptocurrencies. Mm. Well, this is an F1 show. So, um, I'm happy with that one. I'll put it that way. I'm happy with that one because it'll just, if nothing else, it'll make great content for a video. True. <laughs> that is very true. Hashtag content. All right, John T, you have got a prediction from me. I'm going to get through mine awfully quickly. So I've made a very simple prediction here. I'm going to say that exactly 24 drivers will be classified in the championship by the end. So in other words, Ooh, four drivers wow. will be subbed in or swapped in at some point. Oh, that's hard. Ooh, well, it's that's on your board now. <laughs> I think... Um... I, I mean, it's not implausible. It has. It, there's been, like... I can't remember how many we had last year, but it was... Um... Last year was none, but the year before, Toro Rosso was rinsing through drivers like nobody's business. <laughs> yeah, well, true. no, but didn't, didn't Giovinazzi sub in for a race last year, or am I confusing the years? Uh, 2017, we also had a button in then as well. That is true. Mm. It's hard, but I hope it happens because it makes it an interesting year. That could tie in quite nicely to one of the predictions I've made, actually. So watch this space. Well, uh, let's see if Hazel gets it. Hazel, your prediction comes from John T, Ooh. who predicts women drivers, specifically at least two female driver development. Dri sorry, at least two female development drivers will be announced. So specifically, that's talking about third drivers, test drivers, simulator drivers. Yeah. So anyone in some sort of junior program connected to a team yeah, or, or specifically part of the F1 team in a development role. Yeah. Well, you specifically an F1 team in development role. We've already got one. Well, if, if the W series starts doing its job, then that's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. Okay. Well, that goes on Hazel's board. She's got one from herself and one from John T and back to my board in which I get one from John T simple one, this title number six. Lewis Hamilton wins his fifth driver's title. It's very reserved. Yeah, I had to have some simple ones in there. And yet, maybe not as a sure thing as it could have been. I do quite like that. I think I've done the same thing of like making a prediction that's like loosely a play on member number five. <laughs> 
Hello. Well, at least I've got someone who's not me on my bingo board now. Okay, Sean. You get one from me. Lucky you. This is a bit of an abstract one, and I found it really hard to explain. Okay, FOM releases a very long-term plan for cars. And what I envisioned was that Ross Braun comes out and he says what he thinks the Formula One car will look like in 20 years' time and then release a bunch of iterations for how he plans everyone to get there. That's that's my thing. He'll come out with some big, grand plan. It doesn't, it, I mean, it could be complete rubbish and never happen, but I think that's what FOM are going are gonna to put for, forward for us. See, that's quite thinking? doable because don't they do that pretty much every year anyway we seem to see these 2050 concepts and whatnot and then never ever see them made so yeah not not usually from fom though we usually see them from like manufacturers or like some concept uh, conceptual artists or someone connected but if fom actually said this is what we're we're aiming for that would be a very interesting thing build themselves a formula e car sorry john they should build themselves a formula e car they look amazing Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe the, you're just hoping that FOM wants to not be usurped by the people like McLaren last week. Okay, Jonty. I'm going to pull out another prediction for you. And this one comes from Sean, in which Roman Grosjean gets a race ban. Fin- I-, I had to get one. Oh, that's a done deal. <laughs> Roman Grosjean continues his habit of crashing and will eventually receive enough super license points to get a race ban. He's in the stealth car now. Oh, the car that just blends in with the tarmac. Mm. They'll never see. They'll never see him coming. They'll never who did it. All right, Hazel, your <laughs> third prediction coming up, and you get another one from yourself. Ooh, first time winner in Bahrain. A driver who hasn't previously won a Grand Prix will spice things up at just the second round. That's bold. There's two drivers who haven't won Grand Prix in the three uh, in the top six cars. And if you had to put Good your point. money on it, um, Pierre. Ooh. Okay. He he did very well in Bahrain last year. Well, Leclerc's winning in Australia, so... Oh, yeah, of course. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everybody's got three now. I'm going to pick out my fourth one, which also comes from Hazel. Uh, Hazel predicts MGUH proves more unreliable. Uh, you've gone technical with this one. Reduced airflow over and around the cars makes the world's dinkiest turbines even naffer. <laughs> Description for that. <laughs> um... Because they're simplifying the aero around the cars, um, the air outtake, um, which is where uh, MGUH sits, it sits in the exhaust, is going to be more turbulent, um, I think, or there's going to be more turbulence in the air around that, or there's just generally going to be disrupted airflow. MGUH is one of the reasons that the aerodynamics on uh, modern F1 cars are so complicated, because you need to have it running in super hot air, because that's how it works. It recovers in heat. It's a little fan, basically, <laughs> that runs in the exhaust. Um, and uh, they're very fragile because of where they are and what they do. The software that manages them is quite vulnerable. Um, and they're very relied upon to maximise the usage of the MGUK. So, yeah, I think they're going to be under more strain. Very well reasoned. I like that. The good thing about have, having Hazel on board is you get a lot of uh, power unit technical chat. <laughs> Don't call it an engine. <laughs> uh, okay, Sean, your fourth prediction comes from John T. Oh, my, okay. Oh, no. <laughs> Do a hard one. Do a hard one. An- animal on track. <laughs> oh, not again. <laughs> not like Gary. There'll be an animal on track during a session, not including birds. There's always birds. So a, I've got a one groundhog like again. It's quite possible. In the past, we've had dogs, deer, lizards, lizards groundhogs, and it's a fun one. I, re- I read this as not including turds because the screen is quite small. <laughs> and I was like, "There's, there's not always turds. What are you talking about?" <laughs> but that could be important as providing evidence for the animal being on track. Oh, that's true. You have that's to see a, a physical animal on the track. Okay, well. You can have that one, Sean. John T, on the other hand, gets a prediction from John T. Ha. Oh, oh, no. In which you've predicted a title split. Drivers and constructors' titles go to different teams. Yeah, I, I quite like this one. I think that's pretty doable. That's pretty reasonable. Um, mm. It's not out there. And actually, John T, you've got one prediction from every single person so far. I think you're the only one with that. It uh, remains to be seen if that's good. <laughs> well, true. All right, Hazel, and your fourth one is going to come from me which doesn't require an explanation. Very simple. Hulkenberg 
finally gets his first podium. Oh. I'm going to do it. I'm going to say it out loud. I'm going to risk it. <laughs> See, I don't... <laughs> Some people might be rooting for this, but I will be like simultaneously pleased to get the bingo tick off and also just... <sighs> I can't read you're that being, noise. You're being persuaded by my other predictions, aren't you? What, Hulkenberg? Or... Yeah, Stuart. He's being persuaded because I'm magically ahead on points already. Oh, yes, of course. Oh, don't start. Here we go. Yes, for now. For now, John T. Right. <laughs> Let's get on to my fifth prediction, which is again from me. My, bo oh, my board's going to be so yellow. Okay. which This is rigged. <laughs> uh, this is a, a um, repeat prediction in which I've predicted the driver championship and the team championship will be uh, different from each other, except uh, John T phrased it better. So that's quite good that someone didn't get that twice. Uh, we can breeze through that and straight onto Sean's board in which he's going to get a prediction from me. I've mm. predicted Liberty will revamp Fridays or they're going to announce they're going to revamp Fridays. Um Friday practice sessions get a lot of stick for being a bit dull and giving far too much info to the teams and Liberty will attempt to reinvent them going forwards. See, I, I'm not for that. You know, you, you pay you pay to go to Grand Prix, you pay an absolute fortune for it and then they cut the track time. Um, that's probably a conversation for another video, but yeah. Well, I'm not saying it's necessarily a good thing, but I'm saying it's a kind of... Uh... It's, I don't it's think a they good should prediction, cut the track but... time. I just think they should make them do different things. I'm all up for getting them to do support races in weird local cars. That's my plan. Just mm. junior drivers. Get I, them on track am, in the other cars. I am totally for that idea, Stuart, because in Sochi, they'll be racing in Trapps. There you go. Good plan. <laughs> all right, John T, let's pick do a prediction Do not insult our fine tradition of la racing larders in the Caucasus. <laughs> Brilliant. Ooh. Okay, John T, I've predicted... For you, no one wins three races in a row, which Ooh. which I don't Do know. Do you if mean I, no I, teams or no? Uh, no person, no individual okay. driver. Which that's I'm... very marmite. That's like yeah, that's either very easy or very hard. Mm. Yeah, it could. You know, as soon as someone gets two in a row, then you're going to be on the edge of your seat, John T. Okay, Thanks. Hazel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Hazel, this one comes from Sean. Um, okay, he's predicted Honda will have no power unit failures. Honda will suffer no failures to their power units during the season, excluding uh, pre-season testing. Sorry, wow. Hazel, I'm not going to lie. I was hoping Jonty would get that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, see, uh, this is fine because I used to work for Honda. So I'm, I'm okay with this on my board. Yeah, exclude. <laughs> they can have as many as they want in pre-season testing, but from Australia onwards, no. Right, so I mean, it's we, never going to happen. them out but... after every session in pre-season but but from australia no new power unit. oh no wait they're allowed three so yes. okay just to clarify what this means so they have if does it have to fail during a session or does it mean they they take no penalties at all for power units uh, no penalties okay right. yeah that's fair gearbox is separate though yeah yeah if, if it had been john to said no failures but because it's hazel i'll say <laughs> no penalty <laughs> points <laughs> okay right. okay we've got five apiece I'll move on to, so we can all get to... I've got another one from myself. Okay, quite the opposite here. I've, I've predicted Tauros will burn through over 70 power unit elements. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's between the two drivers. Um, uh, they're allowed 15 each. Uh, for context, last year they went through 74. Okay. So uh, if they have a... It might be possible. I think it's quite possible, especially if they start playing the game for Red Bull, was my thinking. Which they've already announced they would. Yes. So depending on how well that Honda's doing at the beginning of the season, we might see them starting to do a lot more testing with that engine. Well, fingers crossed for party mode. Yeah. Hazel, you and I are hoping for very different things from Honda this year. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Sean, uh, this one is for yourself. Sean, you've predicted Charles Leclerc will win seven races. Yes. Easy. That's a nice, easy one. I didn't even need a description. Just look at that. Seven easy races. as that. And we're saying at least? At least, yeah. Okay. At least seven. Okay. I, oh, I I wouldn't have predicted that for myself. Yeah, that's How a bit... How did Vettel win last year? Five. Less than he should. Right. 
<laughs> what if they rock up to testing 10th fastest? Oh, no. <laughs> okay, John T. Hazel's... Just sandbagging. All right, Hazel. I mean, John T. Hazel's given you a prediction that Lando Norris will score on his fifth race. The prediction, he, the prediction <clears> being he doesn't score until his fifth race. So, because you said the best yeah. chassis in F1 takes a few rounds to get going. So I'm going to be just hoping that he bins it before races. Or just sits oh, around in that, 15th. That's going to make me mean. See, I didn't think about this when I was putting this together, that it shapes the way you look at races. <laughs> like you may have gone in really rooting for Lando Norris, but... No, you can't. I think that's a, mm. that's a pretty fair prediction. McLaren have spent the last few years struggling to get their season started. I'm on his Discord. I'll see if I can bribe him with a pot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Hazel. One for you from John T, which mm. is called Punctured Wings. Uh, John T's predicted a rear puncture rips off someone's rear wing. So a tyre explodes in such a way that it tears off the rear wing. Yeah, well, just when the driver's on the way back to the pits with the amount of the rear, rear wings are hanging over the rear wheels now. Okay. Because they're uh, wider. See, and, and they're like the flailing piece of tyre or whatever. So it just we, yeah. Out. We've yeah. seen what it does to floors. Okay, Hazel, I think that's okay to be on your board. I wouldn't worry too much about mm -hmm. that. Okay, my uh, one, two, three, seventh prediction is from Hazel. Oh, okay. Two rapid podium reshuffles. As with Kimi and Max in 2017, there'll be two incidents when the checkered flag falls on different or differently ordered final three than the actual, uh, than actually assembles in the cooldown room. Wow. That's interesting. You can tell I'm a Formula E journalist. Oh, yeah. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, wow. Okay, thanks, Hazel. That's looking nice on my board. Two. Two times. Great. Okay. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> okay, Sean. This one is from John T. Back no. once again. A former driver will return. Uh, dun, dun, dun. No. Did you did you have anyone in mind or were you just No, could be anyone. Really? Bordet, Jeff, Barakello. <laughs> Bordet. Akinen. That's got me thinking now. I'm just trying to think who might possibly come back that isn't Fernando Alonso. Mm. Does it have to be for a race? Yeah, it has to be into a race seat. And uh, not specifically that year, just one. announced so, during so next year. But oh, they, okay. they can't just like do a free practice or some mucking around. No, no. Okay, but, but would Paul but... DeResta subbing in for Felipe Massa count? Yeah, that would count. Okay. And would That's someone be... being announced to rejoin for 2020 count? Yeah. Okay. So right. it's the announcement that's the important part. Yeah. All right, John T. You've uh, drawn one for yourself here. Japanese takeover. Honda buyout tour also as a factory team. Yeah, I can see it. I can genuinely see it happening. That would certainly leave Red Bull in an interesting position. Again. Well, I'm really nervous now because Hazel will know already. So I'll quickly, <laughs> I'll quickly move on to Hazel. And Hazel's also predicted one for herself. She's, as I said, it's Silverstone's final year. FOM failed to reach an agreement with the f first home race of F1 Grand Prix. Yeah, I predicted this last year and they still hadn't made an agreement at the end of last year. And you think um, they just won't get something signed? I, d I don't think they will. I don't think they'll be able to get something signed post-Brexit in time. For um, That's what's making me worry about it. Yeah, I, d I, d I think even if they could come to an agreement about the fees there won't be a viable freight method for um, getting stuff there. Yeah, yeah, okay. I can't really argue with you on that one, to be honest. Okay, we've each got uh, seven on the board. Let's move on to the eighth for me, which is from Hazel. Again, shock Red Bull reshuffle. Shock, sort of inverted commas, Kvyat fired, ticked and promoted, etc. I mean, it doesn't have to be specifically that, but like but that kind of Red, thing. Red Bull, you know, roll the dice a bit. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm okay having that one. I've, I'd already sort of predicted in a in a different video that Kvyat was just um, sitting there to keep the seat warm. <laughs> so I wouldn't be surprised if he was the first against the wall. And I don't have a single Sean prediction on my board. That's probably a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, moving on to Sean. Uh, Sean, you got a prediction from me in which I predict Baku is super dull because yeah, everyone raves about Baku, but I still haven't forgotten that first race in Azerbaijan which was really really boring and I just I, I'm concerned that we've had a couple of sort of lucky nonsense races 
yeah, I, I said the other day that without the the safety car and all the chaos, I think we just end up with 2016 every year. How how do we judge whether it's dull or not? Because um, Sean could be like, that was so boring. <laughs> I, I just, I wasn't into it, you know. <laughs> yeah, do, do I never we, thought about that. Do we ask the Bear viewers? I think if it's contentious, sure, we can run a little poll. But um, okay. I, I think it should Beautiful. be demonstrably quite boring. You wait for the post-race stream. <laughs> oh, God, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Right, John T, let's see who you get. Oh, you've got another prediction from Hazel. Uh, Toro Rosso's team ordered for Red Bull. Hazel's predicted with the same PU and Toro Rosso having a stronger relationship to Honda. All that caffeine starts generating paranoia. So you think they'll capitulate fairly readily over the season, do you? Um, well, whether or not they capitulate readily, <laughs> um, I suspect that Red Bull and Toro Rosso, in a way that they haven't been for a few seasons, but were in 2015 they were actually really close on track and the red bulls moved back forward again um but um the toro rosso kind of got throttled for a few seasons afterwards and you don't really notice because they are the baby team but in the year that carlos and max moved up um they potentially had at least as fast a car as the red bulls um okay. so i suspect they'll just be a lot closer together than they have been for a while I can see that happening. So I, I think they'll get in the way of the Red Bulls and the Red Bulls will be like, get out. All right. Wh whether they agree or not. Okay, Hazel, uh, you've got one from John T, which is called Orange Grand Prix. Liberty will announce a Dutch Grand Prix for 2020. Again, not, not, not a big risk there. Oh, really? Well, actually, 2020 is pretty, pretty soon. Mm. They're going to need something to fill the void of Silverstone. That's I was true. just literally going to say that. <laughs> um, I, I don't think Holland is it, but um, yeah, okay. okay. Yeah, I definitely see a Dutch Grand Prix coming, but 2020 is pretty quick. Okay, well, really? that's on your board, Hazel. <laughs> wow. Okay, back to me again, which I'll obviously pick one for myself. Yep. <laughs> okay, I, I've, I've gone for a nice positive, if naive one this year. Uh, no social media controversy for Hamilton. He's going to go the whole year without causing a stir on social media. He's going to be chill as... F. No comment. <laughs> Which means that he will cause some social media controversy during testing. <laughs> well, the rules are these predictions come into effect when, as of the video, until the last race. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be really cool looking back on the season and sort of like <laughs> this time next year. <laughs> okay. Sean, another one from John T. I'm enjoying this. <sighs> Really? <laughs> He's not getting any m much of yours, but you're getting a lot of his. Okay, John T predicts last in, first out. At least one driver will lose his seat during the season. Yeah, I, that's an e I think that's quite an easy one. I can see that. This, this is, is gone. Not subbed, gone. And this isn't someone retiring of their own free will. This is being replaced. This is the boot. Okay. If Kimmy gets bored around Spa, he can't count. I think that's quite doable, Sean. I think you're okay having Sounds that. Strangely pleased with that one. All right. And Jonty. You've got one from Jonty. Um, returning tyres. Uh, Jonty predicts the one to five naming system for tyres is scrapped by Belgium. You know, I very nearly did this myself. Yeah. Even though it was just for testing, there's already been a massive backlash because, well, it's just they're trying to make it simpler when it was already simple. There was just a lot of it. Yeah, I think I agree with you. I have this impression. I just have this thought the commentators are going to go completely overboard and be like, this is the medium tyre. But it's not really the medium tyre. It's actually the C2 tyre, which was the Hypersoft from last year. And, and, and everyone's going to go, what is happening? Yeah. yeah. Imagine that with Crofty. Yeah, me and Sean were actually chatting with messages saying we should have had a prediction of Martin Brundle turns around live and says, for God's sake, Crofty, shut up about the tyres. All right, Hazel. And this one yep. also comes from John T. John T, your predictions are going to be worn out in a couple of turns. Delayed start. At least one race will have a start delayed by the weather. All right, fair enough. Okay, but that, that could happen. Yeah, definitely. And back to me again, and I'm going to get a prediction from Sean at last. Hey, finally. Williams launch with a red and white livery. New Polish Ooh, find out on Monday. That's true. A uh, new Polish sponsor will leave Williams with a predominantly red and white livery. Oh, I, see, I don't think yeah, this is going to so, happen. So not, 
Not uh, white with uh, a red no. stripe on it, predominantly red and white. So it needs to look obviously red and white, if that makes sense. Yeah. You think in Marlborough, Winfield, Old Alfa Romeo? Oh, as long as it's not like a 98 Winfield. Oh, no. But yeah, that that kind of thing. See, I was just saying on Twitter today, I'd put someone who asked me what they thought Williams would be like, and I thought it would be classic Williams blue and white with a red sponsor, kind of like their, um, when they had the Maldonado branding. Or maybe I can give you one back. Okay, Sean, you get one from John T again. Uh, points for all. Every driver will score at least five points, Sean. Well, that's not going to get crossed off, is it? <laughs> Wasn't that far off last year. Yeah, well, how many drivers didn't get that? Just the one? Uh, uh, yes, Sorokin got one point, didn't he? Five of mine. Okay, right. John T. Let's see if you can finally get one from Sean. No, another one for yourself. <laughs> Uh, John T, you've predicted Leclerc ve- beats Vettel. So Leclerc has to end the season with more points than Vettel. Haven't you also got Leclerc win seven races? Mm, uh, no. John T does not have that one. I think Sean gave that to himself. I think he might I have. did, yeah. I did. Let's have a quick look at Sean, Sean's board. Yes, Sean, you have predicted that for yourself. Ooh. If he wins seven races, you could probably guess that he probably would beat Vettel. Yeah, well, that's kind of a hard one. I was hoping Sean would have that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you're living with it now. Okay, Hazel, you've got one from Sean. I think you've got an awful lot from Sean. Uh, Sean's predicted Verstappen beats Gasly. So kind of a similar prediction that just happened, but in a different team. Max Verstappen finishes ahead of Pierre, Ga- Pierre Gasly in the Drivers' Championship. Not out of left field. <laughs> no, there's a few very simple ones in here. <laughs> I guess you were hoping you would get that for yourself. Just a bit. Okay. Well, that's sitting on Hazel's one. Uh, and I, I don't want that to happen, so... Bittersweet. Um, see, I think it's quite nice. It's like when you when you bet against yourself, so at least you've got something to smile about, whatever happens. Mm. Background to me again. And I've predicted another one for myself. This is getting a bit out of hand. Okay, I've predicted Renault will score at least two-thirds of Red Bull's points. Um, an improving Renault and a destabilised Red Bull means Renault will finish the year with at least two thirds of the points of Red Bull. A lot of my thoughts about this year have been around based around Renault generally being on the up and up. That's going to be hard. Well, just wait till the first race when Hulkenberg gets that podium that I predicted. <laughs> okay, Sean, you give one to yourself. Oh no. Um, very similar to one uh, Hazel predicted. You, but you've explicitly predicted Tickton replaces Kvyat before the season's end. Yes. Yeah, I think he will. I, I really do. I just, I, a bit like you, Stuart, I think he's just a placeholder. I think he is just there until Tickton's ready. I oh, hope not, sadly. So, your clarification Daniel Tickton will replace Daniel Kvyat during the 2019 season before the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. He must race in Kvyat's place and not just be a driver announcement. Yep, he's got to physically be in that car for a race. It can't be, he will race in 2020. So, lovely. I love how narrowly you define this as it goes to yourself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to change that quite badly. <laughs> All right, John T. Finally, you got one from Sean. Valtteri Bottas is dropped mid-season. <laughs> Valtteri yep. Bottas will be dropped by Mercedes before the end of the summer break. Oh, that's quite specific. I mean, this does help John T with his 24 classified drivers. It does. It also helps someone else who I've given driver is dropped. There's a few tying together. Yeah. John, T, you've got the 24 classified drivers on your board, as I'm looking at here. Um, you've also got Roman Grosjean gets a race ban, so that ties into the 24 drivers as well. So you're really hoping for <laughs> a lot of churn. Yeah, very sp- much so. Specifically on your board. And Hazel, uh, you get a prediction from yourself again, in which you've predicted a shock Vettel retirement, in which you say it's it's not really a shock. <laughs> but if he doesn't win the title, he'll probably fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so uh, so I kind of like because I think as I I think he's at the end of his contract this year as well. Um, that might be wrong, but if not, I I think that Sebastian doesn't like losing. So. Oh, the wording's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm gonna be that guy because the comments will come at you with it. But um, I'll, I'll even do my voice if you like. Um, actually, I think you'll find his contract expires at the end of 2020. Oh, does it? <laughs> it really does, yes. <laughs> well, good to throw uh, that one in. I want. I wonder if he has any. 
um, performance clauses. He did at Red Bull, didn't Definitely. he? Yeah, that's Definitely. at Ferrari. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't believe he has a performance clause at Ferrari. Um, apart from his own performance. Yeah, so, I was going to say it's probably not yeah. him having a performance clause. They've probably got one on him. Yeah. Um, but let's pick out one for me, and it's another one by myself. Uh, okay, I've predicted one race will only go half distance. So Ooh. to clarify, one, one of the races will end before the 75% mark, meaning half points will be awarded. Because I thought, it's been a little while. You're all only going to use our Monaco track. Get it over it fast. <laughs> Just go to the party. Never. I, 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 on that, what was the official reason for not using, for Formula E deciding? Oh, it, it costs an insane amount. Oh, okay. Fair enough. I thought F1 had thrown a strop. That's what I was assuming. You can't no, use our no, track. No, 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 no. It's, it's, we'd, we'd have to close all the roads earlier. And oh. because, because so we can use the circuit, um, we don't have to have an A-grade circuit. Oh, okay. But if you build that circuit, it has to be a Formula 1-grade circuit. in order. F so it can never be used as a sub-Formula 1-grade circuit. So any time yeah. it's constructed, it has to be constructed to A-grade. Um, and we don't use circuits like that. So, yeah, I mean, basically, Formula E doesn't have the budget. Well, that's a lot better than the reason that I heard whispered that they didn't want to be directly compared to Formula One cars, as if anyone was of the delusion that they were sort of the same speed or the same thing. <laughs> I mean, there kind of is that, but I mean, they probably are about the same speed around Monaco anyway. So... You say a nippy Fiat Panda is probably as quick as a, a Formula One car yeah. around Monaco. <laughs> yeah, so so I, I I think that's actually it, particularly in Monaco, it would actually massively flatter us. Right, I have got a massive amount of my own predictions on my board, so we really need to change that. Um, but sh going on to Sean, he's throwing a prediction at himself again with oh, a no, massive no, no. a massive description. Okay, Perez. No, oh no, not this one. <laughs> Perez and Stroll collide more than three times. So your clarification, Sergio Perez and Lance Stroll will make car damaging contact at, at least at least three times. Car damaging includes race ending damage, front wing damage, barge ward damage, rear wing damage, puncture. And if you've if you've written more than that, it's it's off the end of that. that um, I just put severe floor damage at the bottom as well. And I again, I was really hoping John T might get that one because one, <laughs> on. it's a brilliant prediction. And two, yeah. I think he'd enjoy it as well. How how many times did Ocon and Perez collide? Because I'm sure they... Uh, Perez just kept driving into him. It was at least three times in 2018. Yeah, I'm I'm sure there were at least... At, at least twice, yeah. 2017. Uh, do you know, looking at that prediction again, though, the thing is, if Perez hits him more than once, he's probably going to be dropped. So that's probably not going to work out very well. That's fine with me, 24 drivers to fill. Okay. <laughs> Okay, Sean, that goes on your own board, so good luck with that one. Thanks, Sean. <laughs> it's getting nervous now. I know the things I've still got to be able to pick. Okay. All right, John T, a prediction for you, by you. V for victory. Max will win at, win at least three races. Well, despite Hazel's bold predictions, Honda is still kind of an unknown up at the front, so it might not be conservative. That is true. There are a lot of predictions riding on how well Honda integrate themselves in within Red Bull and how much how much of another leap they've made. If they come out in Australia full of power and full of reliability, then we could be looking at our bingo boards in a whole different light. It does also this depend if the Mercedes go on fire. That is true yes. also. <laughs> I'll tell you something else as well. If Leclerc does win the seven and Verstappen gets three, that's only 11 races to split between the rest of them. So we could end up with a really good season if they come true. And immediately a shock vessel retirement. <laughs> <laughs> if all our predictions came true, it's going to be a hell of a season. <laughs> it is. <laughs> all right, Hazel. Uh, one for you from Sean. Red Bull have a special launch livery. They're going to launch their 29 car with a special mm -hmm. testing or launch livery, but the livery must change before FP1 in Australia. Ooh. That's, okay. <clears throat> That's quite likely. I can see them That's what mucking around with that kind of thing. If Mercedes yeah. are doing their weird livery, they might choose not to. I wonder if that might put them off. I was going to say that, actually. I'm still just bitter about the dazzle pattern, to be honest. About the fact they never actually put it on a track. Yeah, it was awesome. Okay, we're on to the last four for each of us. I'm going to take one from Hazel. In which Hazel's predicted... Okay, George Russell outscores Lando Norris. 
bold. Two Ooh. Brits in teams that might very be, bold. Yeah, the two Brits in teams that might generously described as racing for the bottom duke it out. In Abu Dhabi, George once again comes out on top. That all hangs on Paddy Low, to be honest. Mm. See, because I'm a Williams fan from yeah. like being we and that. I just I, I feel like maybe like and George is a bit lanky and. Like no offense, George, but like slightly dorky looking. He he has an air of Damon, so just maybe. Okay, so you think we're um we're going to enter a new era? Maybe. I feel like he's the more complete driver of the two as as well. Norris is quick, but I think Russell has got everything he needs in place for F one. He's just those few years older. Like Norris is really good, but but George is just those few years older. I'm nervous for this to be on my board, but I'd actually I'd absolutely love to tick it off. Right. Sean, you get one from Hazel, in which Hazel... Oh, thank God it's not from me. <laughs> Hazel predicts a pit stop wheelie disaster. At least one wheel not attached during a pit stop. Which is I like... think that's quite a good one to tick off. I think could do that now. Is, is that just loose or is that oh, just some, free Something wheeling. happens and either the wrong wheel's attached or a wheel is not properly attached. Uh, the kind of thing that happened with Haas last year, or Williams did it once. Uh, so the sort of thing that might lead to Stewart's prediction of uh, pit stops um, having a regulatory change mid-season. Uh, yes. But yes, uh, so like some kind of significant problem where it's just something straight up is attached wrong or isn't attached to a car. Um, okay, that's good for you, Sean, because you've got a lot of scope there. I'm going to get my own hardest one, aren't I? You, you might well do. Well, let's find out. It's you now. And you're getting one. Oh, you're getting one from Sean. Oh, please, 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 please. This is, this is a nice one. Williams will win the raft oh. race in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. I always forget that. <laughs> so nice I one. have not been paid to promote it. I must say that. No, that's fair enough. I have absolutely no concept of how realistic this one is. I don't they know won it last year. So there you go. Yeah. It, if it takes place, it didn't take place in 2017. So it may not go ahead. So, John, to your, your, you're relying on it happening and then Williams winning. Uh, yeah. But that's nice. That gives you someone to root for when they do it. Okay. It's fun. Um, okay, Hazel. And you've picked for yourself again. Ooh. Wow, you've potentially gone very bold here. Sauber, or Alfa Romeo as they're now known, come fourth in the championship. Wow. Despite Raikkonen being clearly checked out years ago. Uh, um, I'm giving myself all kinds of things that, or I've got loads of stuff that I really don't want to happen on the board. Um, so I think Sauber had a strong, or uh, whatever they're called now. I can't do this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm very tired. Um, Alfa Romeo will will just make that leap. They made a huge leap last year. Um, they've got more backing and potentially more support this year. Um, they have two drivers that um, Ferrari, as their sort of parent team, to a, a semi-unofficial degree, really want to succeed, which is Ferrari's last world champion, which is mm. enormously emotionally important to Ferrari. He can't retire and they want to see him succeed because he is their last world champion and they need him to be recent and relevant um, for their sakes. And their big Italian hope. So Ferrari will help Alfa Romeo, um, and it seemed like Sauber Alfa Romeo last year were responding to that help. They have a really good development driver, um, and yeah, I think I think there's every chance that we could see them overstep the the other midfielders, especially because they, unlike the other front facing midfielders, don't have the pressure of being. Um, uh, so Renault uh, would potentially be the other competition for fourth, probably, because they really are throwing everything at F1 this year, but they have the pressure of being a manufacturer team, um, which is a considerable pressure because they're having to develop for customers as well. Uh, formerly known as Force India, Racing Point have um, a, a power unit that's going to go on fire. Um, <laughs> uh, and Haas, um, uh, their sponsor is going to get investigated for fraud. So this I think I played my points. case quite well. Yep, all your predictions tied together very well. <laughs> well, it's on well, your on, board. On my own card, it's on, be it. <laughs> yes, exactly. Okay, good. You took the risk for yourself. Um, right, next one for me, also by Hazel. Uh, 
Oh, Hazel, Return of the Flav. Despite a <laughs> oh, sorry. long-ish exile, Briatori is back, back, back. Do you really think this? Look, it, look <laughs> if, if Nelson P.K. Jr. is collaborating with Fernando Alonso's surfwear brand, I can't believe in anything at this point. Mm. Okay, well, thanks for putting that on my board. I'll be very sad to take that one off. <laughs> <laughs> Unlike the George Russell one you gave me. Um, oh, I've got, I've got five of yours now. So it's, it's basically you and me on my board. Right, Sean. Not me, not me, not me, not it, me, not me, not it's me. It's you. Uh, Lando Norris will finish on the podium. Uh, you very strictly said he must stand on the podium, will not count if he's promoted through post-race penalties after the podium ceremony. So this is another one aimed at me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly. Uh, yeah, basically... If he's in the, like in the US 2017, if he's in the cool down room and he gets swapped out there, that's fine. But otherwise, no, he has to actually stand on the podium. Okay, so if he crosses the line and gets as far as the cool down room? Uh, no, I got, sorry, mixing it up there. Um, he has to stand on the podium. What I meant is if, if like Max Verstappen's third yeah. in Baku and then he gets disqualified and Norris gets promoted, that would count if it's in the cool down room. But if it's afterwards and Max Verstappen's already got his champagne okay so he, he, he can't have a post transfer trophy yeah yes yeah. that He's makes a lot more sense than how i was trying yeah. to word it yeah. <laughs> okay so lando norris physically stands on the podium if he stands on the podium and then gets disqualified later does that still count um it's on my board so yes okay <laughs> <laughs> as long as you've clarified ahead of time right john t this one's from sean has sean finally managed to hit you with one he wants um, a knee-jerk FIA rule change. The FIA or Liberty oh. will push for a rule change in a knee-jerk reaction to something that has or hasn't happened. <laughs> uh, for example, in 2018, we saw next to no overtaking in Australia, and so there was a sudden push to get the 2019 error regs approved and put in place. No, I can see that happening. It's historically accurate and has happened okay. frequently throughout mm -hmm. the years. You know what they're like. That something. And it could even tie in with a, another prediction we've had. A, a, a wheel comes off and bounces down the pit lane. They'll go, oh no, God, we've got to change everything. Let's super glue wheels to rims or something like that. You know what I'm like. <laughs> and, and yeah, and if that rule changes something to do with the pit lane procedures, then then we all win. Or whoever got that one won. Um, all right, Hazel, you've got one from Sean. <laughs> Sean has predicted scooter racing. A scooter race will break out in the paddock or pit lane between Lewis Hamilton and any other driver. Skateboards are an acceptable alternative. I'm so sorry. That was genuinely meant for somebody else. I can I see really this happening between Lewis and Lando. Or Lewis and Carlos. I, 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 I can see well. this happening because every time one of them um, injures their knee or something, they always like tootle around on electric scooters in paddocks. That's partly why you see them on them. Or like the proper like folding like kids scooters. Yep. If they've got like a bit of a bad leg. Uh, yeah, so I, I can see this happening. I'm happy with this one. Okay. Had you been watching Days of Thunder when you made that one? No, I just had this. You know when he's bounding down the pit lane and he overtakes Sebastian Vettel with the smirk on his face? I just, mm -hmm. I, I'm just really dreading this going in the video. Uh, but I would really love for somebody like Lando Norris to hop on a scooter and wipe the smirk off his face. I, I think it could happen. Does it, does it count if it's like Sky F1 or someone make them do it? Or does it have to be spontaneous? Mm. I ask this as somebody who creates content in my <laughs> Also, no, then. <laughs> well, okay, Hazel, if you make it happen, it doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. I, I don't work for the sky. Yeah, but if you have a word with someone... Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know you don't work in a media vacuum. All right, let's pick out one for me. And it's from me again. Okay. I've predicted that a driver will lose his win due to a time penalty. It's, what I'm actually saying is that for the first time, a driver will cross the line physically ahead, but carrying a time penalty, which means we all know they haven't got the win when they cross the line, if that makes sense. So they, as if they're carrying a five second penalty, but they're only four seconds ahead of second place. So it's, it's not a post race happens. penalty. No, it's, 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 you know, when they've done their final pit stop, so they can't take that that yep. mini stop and go penalty so they have to carry it with them because we haven't had that yet in formula one where they're actually carrying the penalty and winning well we have but they've carried the penalty and retained the win because the gaps are so big in formula one that usually you can 
Oh, yes. So, like, it's I very see. rare to have a photo finish. So even if you get a 30-second penalty, you might well be out by that much. Um, like the time that uh, Lewis's engineer was telling him to push and push and push on the last laps to draw out a 45-second lead because they thought he was going to get a 30-second penalty. Mm. Oh. I, li I like the way loads of these stack together because like, that would ball into quite a few of them. Yeah. Yeah, that could lead into the knee-jerk reactions. <laughs> I really want this to happen just for the, the hours of fun we'll have on Twitter afterwards. <laughs> right, Sean. This, <laughs> you've given yourself a prediction again. I should be okay now. All right, Hulkenberg gets his first podium. Oh, maybe not. As a winner. Yeah. So Hulkenberg will get oh. at least one podium, but his first ever podium will be as the race winner. Go big or go home. I'm just going to go home. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, I, I'd love to see him on the podium. It's about time. I do get the feeling that he's never going to do it. Um, but I also get the feeling that, like Olivier Panis in 97, he's always referred to as Monaco Grand Prix winner Olivier Panis. I could just see Hulkenberg winning and then never being on the podium again. I I mean, this year? Sure. I mean, he did it with Le Mans. Yeah. Well, I'm sure... If that, if that Renault's anywhere near... If you look at Red Bull last year, you could probably argue they were surprise winners in some respects in the early season. So if Renault can hit the ground running while Red Bull are still struggling, Mercedes, Bottas not up to up to form, Lewis Hamilton not quite there, Vessel and Leclerc falling out, Hulkenberg and Ricardo there to pick up the pieces. And what you want if just Hulkenberg just happens to be in the lead during the pit stop shuffle when the race is uh, red flagged at less than half yes, distance. <laughs> that'll do. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, John T. This one comes from me in which I've predicted Hamilton will race in another series, which I specify Hamilton will take part in at least one race in another motorsport series. I could just feel him mm. getting the bug, seeing other people doing it and thinking, what's that like? If Mercedes let him. Um, so he doesn't miss do... F1. He doesn't have to miss F1, but he could go, okay. you know, maybe it's something in the summer break or, I mean, it has to happen before the last, the last race weekend. That's when the cutoff for these predictions are. But I think, you know, he could even do a, you know, a local rally. Just something. Now, I'm wondering if you was thinking along the uh, the Instagram post about bike racing. I didn't even think about bikes. Would they let him? Mercedes, no. no. But bikes, yes. Yeah, yeah, I mean Mercedes. Merce <laughs> oh, no, no. I, I mean, he would have to do it, like, under a fake name. Like, oh, it's uh, Jorge Lamilton. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he's getting called all season. Oh, uh, yeah. Clearly, you have been That's to improv classes, Hazel. <laughs> Please make a Twitter account for that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who you're talking about. All right, Hazel, this is your second to last prediction. And again, it comes from yourself. Uh, influencer invasion. We all love the giant lizard, she says. But this year, it's wall-to-wall -wall influencer... influencer in I can't say influencer incidents as vloggers unused to the strict rules of an F1 paddock wreak access level havoc in pit lanes um so it doesn't necessarily have to be in the pit lane but just generally like you end up with some youtube influencer in the commentary box by accident because they're looking for the lose or like someone creates a massive scene during ted's notebook or like you know oh, that's not or, or preferably like on the pit wall someone just ambles through or something <laughs> I've got visions of Matt Gallagher tripping over a tyre and breaking someone's throat. Oh, or having a picnic in the middle of the pit street. Oh, don't. I've fallen over. Uh, I, I have fallen over a tyre and fallen onto a front wing. Um, I am prophetic. It will happen again. It, it hurt a lot. It, it hurt me more than it hurt the front wing. I, I have to say it wasn't in Formula 1, so it was oh, okay. a slightly more robust front wing as well. Thank God. Well, this ties in well with a conversation I saw you having with Sean earlier, where he was asking what you could get away with <laughs> being in the paddock. Not that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't, don't, don't do that, especially not whilst filming. Right. Okay, we've got one prediction each left. Oh. Me first. <laughs> this one's from Sean, in which he's predicted Mick Schumacher gets the 2020 Alpha seat. Yes. He'll be officially announced before the flag falls in Abu Dhabi. Um, bef before I get jumped on, yes, I know Kimi Raikkonen signed a two-year deal, but how many times we see deals get signed in F1 that never get seen out? I, when he signed that two-year deal, I laughed. Honestly, I laughed. I think he'll be gone at the end of next season. So Mick Schumacher just into the Ferrari program. Next one, step up. I, I don't, I don't think, I don't think Mick would necessarily take it. No, 
It's a good point. I, I think he has a very measured and um, sensible approach to the pressure that will happen when he gets to F1. Um, he needs a couple of seasons in F2, really, because yeah. he, he, he gets off to slow starts, doesn't he? He did in Euro F3 and... G, was he in GP? No, Euro F3. Um, he got off to a slow start in that, so he needs, he needs a couple of seasons. But if he wins the F2 title, which some are saying he will, but I don't know if they're fanboys or what, but if he wins the F2 title, he might just want to get into an F1 car rather than reserve driver. I mean, he, yeah. he's got a chance and, um, you know, he's in a good car in F2. Uh, but I suspect Mick will find the first year of all of his racing has been outside of Grand Prix paddocks up until this point. And he comes with so much weight. I mean, he's mm-hmm. going to find it hard to walk around the paddock. Um, and that's quite unusual for a, an F2 racer. Um, I I think he and the Schumacher family in general are very protective of making sure that he doesn't, that it's not a horrible experience. It it might happen. Uh, I'm not saying Ferrari wouldn't do it. I'm I'm not sure Mick would take it. All right, Sean, your last prediction. I'm going to get jaunties, aren't I? No, you've got another one of yours, Sean. Oh, that's fine. I know what it is as well, and I'm up for that. Pierre Gasly will win at least one race. Yes. Surely, surely. Even with Red Bull likely to play, get out of the way, Pierre Verstappen's come in, surely. He's got to get one. Pierre's got some serious metal. Massively uh, underrated going into this season. Massively. Yeah. yeah. Um, Pierre is... is um, Pierre's floofy hair hides a huge <laughs> amount of stress. Um, and I think... I think Pierre... Pierre is very favoured by Honda... So even if Red Bull are being unsympathetic to him, he know and and they are going to have to favour him because he knows how to work with Honda. So also yeah, Max is gonna crash happen. at least once, for goodness sake. I mean <laughs> Really? Once? Don't say that out loud. Okay, Sean, on your bingo board, you've got Leclerc winning seven times, Hulkenberg winning at least once, and Pierre Gasly winning at least once. We're in for one hell of a season. <laughs> <laughs> and Norris on the podium, so <laughs> good luck for you. All very realistic. Right, Jonty. Your last prediction is also by yourself. Um, <laughs> I know what it is. <laughs> Jean, your way, mate. Jean Tot ceases to be president of the FIA. Yeah. Is this? Is this just... Pulling this out. It's not. It's not completely beyond the realms of possibility. With the various rumours going around about Liberty wanting out at the moment, and the totally left field prediction I didn't expect about Flavio coming back, that could be tied into that. Oh there's no! Just, there's just so much going on that I think it could happen. I think he could end up turning around, and going, oh, "I've had enough." If Flavio ends up as president of the FIA, I'm going exclusively to some other motorsport that isn't FIA related. Straight on to cricket. That'll do. <laughs> <laughs> that famous motorsport. Straight, just leave the whole thing behind, straight on to cricket. Robot cricket at cricket. <laughs> but there, there was a car deep there. hope that, I had, that Sean would get that one. And that's your board filled. I've kind of noticed that everyone seems to have their own predictions more than anyone else's. Yeah. But it is randomised, I promise you. All right, Hazel. Very last mm-hmm. prediction. I don't even know who it's from. Oh, it's from me. I have predicted for you that Leclerc will head the championship at some point. So he just has to sit at the top of the title at at least one point during the season, which... Well, once he's won Australia... Well, exactly. Then that's Cross it off now. Done. Then everything yeah. falls into place. Yeah. He wins in Australia. Pierre wins in um, Bahrain. Well, I mean, we've done half the board by this point, haven't we? Should we have a quick look at these boards and see who's looking most likely to walk away with this? Pretty sure it's not me. All oh, right, looking look at my board. It's very, very yellow. I really did pick a lot of my own, which I guess I deserve. I mean, you didn't pick them, to be fair. That is true. The hat picked them. The, the I only got one of Jonty's. And, and it's was... the easiest one. <laughs> There's no particular line that stands out for me as, 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 as doable, maybe. Can it be vertical or horizontal? Like? Or, or diagonal. You can have any of them. Oh. You know, I could get this I could get this left hand column here. Uh, okay, Sean, how do you fancy your chances? 
I mean, first of all, I misread Animal on Track as Arsenal on Track. <laughs> That'd be a whole different thing, and I'd love to see that. Um, what, the whole team? Or yeah, just the whole Western team, Green? just randomly playing down the back straight in Canada. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Wrong place, didn't mean to kick the groundhog. Um, I, think your, I think your right-hand column could be doable. Yeah, it's, it's up to those racing point boys, isn't it? Really? Maybe they'll be just that angry at the fact the name is Racing Point, and they'll just go smashing into each other. I think either of your ends, actually, like the left-hand column is also perfectly doable. Yeah, that's right. Bottas resisting team orders. Well, Sean's um, southwest and northeast diagonal's pretty doable as well. It's not, looking at it again, it's not as bad as I thought, but every single line seems to have one on there that is very unlikely. But it's Formula One. Who knows yeah, if it's Formula One spelled backwards and all that jazz. That said, your top line is Bottas resists team orders, sponsor investigated for fraud, FOM releases some bonkers plan for future qu- uh, cars, and there's an animal on track. Like, that will happen in the first week. Mine looks pretty grim. Well, again, you've got a lot of your own, John T. I think a, bit, a good point, though, is no one's got their own in a line, I don't think. That's true. No. Which, what was FIFA victory again, John T? Uh, Max wins at least three. Okay. Um, my third line doesn't look too bad. Uh, that kind of all hangs on Leclerc. That's true. And I think Sean's right. I think there's one in every every line. Yeah, I was going to say his, his right-hand side line, if you take the Jean Todd one out, that's very possible if something else was there. Yeah, the, so. the problem with that is it's in the corner, so it takes up three lines. <laughs> Your northeast to southwest is pretty good as well. Because you've oh, got yeah. the different driver and teams champions. Yeah. Honda have a renaissance. Um, Leclerc Vettel. Leclerc beats Vettel. And Williams and the win the race. race. I don't think I'll, I will have ever have cheered for a RAF race so much before. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll have to go live for the RAF race this year. <laughs> Make a big fuss out of it just for you, John. Too. Yeah, they do it on Sky, don't they? It's live on Sky. So we, yeah, <laughs> we should. Sky. Yeah, we should all tune in and... Oh, sorry, it's, it's pre-recorded on Sky. It's not actually live on Sky, oh, but they do show it. I can promise you, John T, and I almost guarantee everybody that if we have a RAF race in Canada this year, it'll be better than the 2018 Canadian Grand Prix. You could also win your left-hand column, John T. Again, the raft race is a bit of a... Nobody knows. Also, there's at least two you can tick off if Honda aren't rubbish. But yes, yeah, true. Uh, Hazel, you have a line of your own predictions. Oh, I do. Oh. I, I, I have since realised that I clearly put some wild stuff in there because I was perhaps hungry or something. <laughs> uh, your first time winning in Bahrain. I, I think that's possible. I, I, I don't think that's that wild. I mean, there are two potential first time winners in the front uh, in the front runner cars. And the Merc power units are going to go on fire and neither of the the first time potential winners are, are in those, so... I think sadly as well, Silverstone's probably right. Yeah, Silverstone is right, but it is also in a in a, in a row with no Honda failures. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah but it's also in the northeast to southwest with oh, Hockenberg yes. gets his first podium. Uh, Potentially. Um, <laughs> Silverstone's final year. Uh, Verstappen... Beats Gasly and Champ. Oh, God, it's like the bro of death. Um, and, <laughs> and Sauber come fourth in the championship. So, I, I mean, all of those are possible. They're not things I love. Um, apart from, you know, I'm quite happy for formerly known as Sauber to um, come fourth in the championship. Well, also, uh, my my uh, northwest to southeast is uh, Mark. Um, Mercedes power units go on fire for a bit. Yeah. Like there's a consist there's a consistent level of concern about Mercedes power units going on fire. Yeah. A punctured uh, rear wheel somehow flails around and takes off a rear wing. Also quite plausible. Um, Vettel decides to just piss off forever. Um, quite plausible. He's he's a family man. He's got other stuff to do. Leclerc's there now. Beaten. You know. Um, and Leclerc has the championship at some point, which would probably herald the the prior one. Yes. So I think that's quite likely. Yeah, Leclerc, Leclerc being head of the championship the might come Leclerc. from Mercedes's engine problems as well. Mm. Oh, 
nonetheless, I still can't call right now who has the best board, but we can ponder on that <laughs> as the season unfolds. I think that's everything for the draw. Um, I have to sh I have to say this format was Jonty's brilliant idea. And I think it's worked out really well, and I'm very intrigued to see how this all plays plays out. I've got it's really... been great fun hearing groans. Are we going like, <laughs> to reconvene at the summer break and then at the end? Or... Yeah, I think that would be wise. Would be wise. Just yeah. to let the public rivers as well. Maybe an emergency one if we get us the race of all of our dreams and everyone gets about five things crossed off. Yeah, Lando Norris is on the podium. Honda are the most dominant engine. Power unit. Oh my god. <laughs> <gasps> you did it yourself. Oh my god. It's the end times. Okay, I'm going to wrap the recording up here, but thank you very much for submitting your predictions and being here for the draw. I hope you found it. And... It's been very entertaining. It's been good fun, and I would love all of those to come true. Just think of the content. Oh God, yes. <laughs> all right, lovely. Thank you very much. Look forward to it. Thank you. <laughs>